Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the Daily Tip Show here on the Inspired Business TV channel. Today, we're going to be talking about charging for coaching. Is it right or wrong? Now, the Daily Tip Show is about giving constructive solutions for everyday challenges. And today, we've had a number of people calling us with regard to, well, have you had the challenge of charging for your service and thinking, should I be charging or should I not? My name's Gary Setterfield, and with my business partner and good friend, Suki Waihiwala, we're going to discuss this point. Now, remember, at the end, we're going to have the Power Tip round up, which will highlight the key elements that Suki's discussed through the conversation. So, Suki, welcome. Hi, team, and thank you very much for the Inspired Tribe and yourself, Gary, and for us to have this amazing platform called The Daily Tip Show for bite-sized solutions to daily challenges. Suki. Why should someone be thinking, as a coach, why should I charge for my services when, in all point of fact, are they not actually providing a very valuable service which creates and makes real change in people? Wow, Gary, that's a, that's a serious dichotomy, isn't it? It's like a, it's a real polarised view. I'm not sure if any of the, the listeners today who are coaches, consultants or trainers when you classify yourself as a therapist or a coach, you get a very different energy, a place of center compared to somebody who's a consultant um, or a mentor. To some extent, consultant mentors don't have much of a problem around charging for their services because they're consulting for that reason. But when you move into the, the realms of being a coach and also a therapist, sometimes there is a bit of conflict from within that should I even be charging? Maybe, what about somebody if you think about coaches, therapists, some people are health coaches, such as yoga, such as helping individuals to get fit, lose weight, things that are going to help other individuals. Does that make sense? So yeah, there is a, a bit of an issue there, a bit of a polarized view there, Gary. The question arises that, I think before we go further into the conversation, we have to understand why is it that I'm having this polarized vision or the polarized feeling because we should always align our conscious unconscious consciousness which is the cuc we talk about very regularly within the synagus method um within our community of the inspired tribe if you want to know more about obviously the synagus method please keep in touch communicate text or just comment below please 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 support this movement by subscribing which is very important for us to get our subscriptions up so that we can be in front of more people so you can actually see it in your running within the YouTube environment. And please like and subscribe and also comment. And so hit that bell icon as well. So individuals who are feeling this internally, it's because when we're saying we're a coach and when we're saying we're a therapist or we're saying we're a yogi or something that's a nature, there's an internal context that money is kind of wrong. It's uh, a man-made principle and it's, it kind of lessens the impact within a person's ethics inside their body, inside their mind. And what happens is that our client base that we've been working with over the years have always been reticent or reluctant, should I say, to say it costs you 150 pounds for this session or something of that nature. They feel as though they should be doing this as a bit of a, a tithing, zikat, uh, or seva, and, and in the principles of other languages as well, of gifting charity. Does that make sense, Gary? It does indeed. It does indeed. So, Suki, on that on that question, is there a process or a thought pattern that coaches can go through in order to protect themselves and charge for their service? You know, Gary, this is so necessary for every human being and individual. I'm a very strong believer. There's a, 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 a brilliant saying by a gentleman called Guru Nanak. He ends up being the founder of the Sikh faith, uh, which I'm a part of as well. But he says very, very clearly, if I can just quote him, not as a religious leader, but as an individual, as a thought leader. He says that if you look after yourself, you are one less burden upon anyone else. Which basically seeds a beautiful thinking inside. If I look after myself, or I'll repeat it, if you look after yourself, you're, a less, you're one less burden on the world. This is principally what, this is what uh, Guru Nanak was saying. 
So the, the understanding of this is that if I help myself, and only then can I help others. Now, we've heard that within the coaching arena quite regularly. So the first few steps that I come into my brain, if I'm going to take this journey with you, is the principle that actually being a coach um, and a spiritual service of some kind, an academic service of some kind, we also deserve, you as an individual still deserve, to have enough money to look after yourself, help myself before helping another. We've heard a, a bit of a, a cliche example given quite regularly, but it's a reality. And uh, in this current COVID times, obviously, it's, a, it's not such a reality when we're saying that if a person was flying, for example, and God forbid there was a, an emergency, the oxygen drops. You've heard this before, but please accept my uh, principle of understanding of putting the frame in place, is that if the oxygen drops, the first thing that you're told to do 100% is to grab the mask and place it on your own face because if you pass out with a lack of oxygen, you're no good to your children and you're no good to anybody else, an elderly or a child or any other partner. So the first thing they teach everybody is cover your own face. The upside of this is, is that we think, oh, well, that gives us the oxygen so we can help others. Got it? But the reality is if everybody who is able is covering their own face, you don't have to worry about putting their, putting their mask on. There's the the other side of that same connotation there as well. It's very powerful, very warming to understand what I've just shared there because we always have the, exp the, the expressive conversation about help yourself to help others. Yes, but there's a humility in here. Going back to Guru Nanak saying, he's saying, if you help yourself, you're well less burden on the world, which basically means that if, if you cover your own mask, no one's thinking about, has you have you got the mask on? And they can focus on the people who require the help. So there's the first thing. So in this, there is a beautiful energy that do we have a polarization of, is it right to charge people when they need you? Or is it wrong to charge them when they need you? I think we're going to go a bit deeper into a conversation here is what actually is money and, you know, where are we, what are we charging for? Does that make sense as well? Is that helping there, Gary? Yeah, I think so. It definitely helping because there is a thought pattern, as a lot of our inspired tribe have said to us, where they they have this, should I, shouldn't I, but I'm only helping for a few moments or I'm only helping for a short period of time. That's not the issue. The issue is that you are still helping someone and helping them to change. Mm. That's right, yeah. And, and going further, to give some kind of a bite-sized solution to this, uh, thank you, Gary, is something really simple. The crux is if we can remove the kingpin, um, we'll be doing episode, I think it's 13, and we'll be talking about the DFT method, which is something that I've authored under the Synergus method, but it's a, a module under there called DFT, which is direct focused thought, and also known as daily focused time when it's habitual in the focused realm, and direct focused thought when it's in the emotional clarity realm. So the principal conversation here is we wind ourselves to a single understanding that if we removed the one restriction in our brain, we would also feel free with our thinking. So I'm not going to go through the DFT because we'll do that in episode 13 of the Daily Tip Show. But what I'll do is I'll talk about the principle is what is the underlying challenge that we're facing. And this is fundamentally that money is man-made and it's wrong. Um, it's unethical. Money is the root of all evil, if you've heard that one before. Um, and if, it, if it's okay, I want to sort of disband this a little bit and probably give another version of the world in a very humble way. So it could help each and every one of you listening today to move that just that little step further forward and take charge of your financial journey as well. So if I can go through this, step one would be very simple. If, if I could just go through a process with you and then you could just follow this through. Um, I'm giving this, this is information that I usually only exclusively share with our money kind of money matters or the energetic flow of money course that we've got. And um, Gary, if towards the end with your actual roundup, if you could just put a link down at the bottom, if anybody would like to, um, to sukiwahiwala.com forward slash events, and you can book yourself on our online courses, which we're really, really ramping up at this current moment within this current period. And even if you're watching this in the future, we should always have some events around these four character areas. So the energetic flow of money. Let's let's open this up together if it's okay. So if we go back to bare basics of understanding. If we looked at a note. Now, 
currently we're shifting from plastic notes, so from paper notes into kind of like plastic. But let's just look at the understanding behind this, a promissory, it's a promise. Now, I'm not going to go into the to the um, uh, the extreme uh, environment of what money is and how it's controlling a mechanism and the bearer bonds and the bearing is the bearer of the person, it's a promissory note. Please, let's come out of that for a second, whether it's electronic or not electronic. And maybe that's a question that you can ask me later. How does this relate to being electronic? But let's look at the physical side of things. If there was a 10 pound, 5, 10, 20 or a 50 pound, or if you're in Australia or um, uh, north uh, north of England, British Isles, that's in, in Scotland, you'd still have a 100 pound note. The question would arise is that this is what is this made out of? Usually, historically, it was made of paper. Now, paper, without going too detailed into this, and it was obviously, it's cotton pulp, but it's also paper. So majority of these days, it's, it's cotton pulp and it's paper. But both cases, let's just look at, let's look at one vein. Let's look at paper. Let's just call it paper if it's okay uh, with you, Gary. So if it was paper, what is paper made for? And it was made to translate information to other people, right? And to be a permanent note of information or philosophy thought. Is that right? So it's a it's actually a natural, eternal way of putting something down on a piece of paper that can be stored for a long period of time and possibly for future generations to learn. That's why this particular principle I'm going to share with you is something that you should absorb with gratitude. And I may not have the right version of the world, but for this particular moment, it's something that I'm sharing, uh, Suki. Um, and then I would like you also to be able to teach this after understanding this with your own generations and help as many people as you can. That's why I'm bringing this particular episode into freeware. So here's the, here's the conversation. Paper is a natural substance. It is made from what? Even if you follow cotton, cotton is also a natural substance. Um, and you can follow that back to the cotton, but the cotton plant. But let's just look at the fact of paper for a moment, because it's easier and linear. If we said a tree, is principally paper is made of a tree, yeah? So itself being wood. Once upon a time, they also used to slice, slice paper, one, a tree is 100% to get to that finish on the paper, but let's just say it's a tree. A tree has a mixture without going too much into science, just as bite size. We have carbon and we have energetic fields and energetic understanding. We have water H2O and we have carbon dioxide. So the tree does not require carbon dioxide, but it requires the oxygen through photosynthesis as a process to bond the energetic points, the, the, the photosynthesis energy to create some kind of a food that can be ingested. The key there is actually what we classify as energy coming from an external source that helps photosynthesis. In this particular case, that particular energy would be sunlight, right? It's very simple, it's sunlight. So if we look at the sunlight and we're looking at the understanding of sunlight itself, it is the key bond that makes a tree, a plant, or any of the other uh, green photosynthesis-based uh, plants and animals, no animals obviously, but photosynthesis-based plants that turn into something natural. It's the most natural reaction. Is that fair, And uh, there? Absolutely, absolutely. And you're taking me back to my science days now, so I'm, I'm getting this, loving it. Thank you. And with reference to sunlight, the sunlight we receive, give or take a few thousand years, is approximately 10,000 years in its journey to hit this Earth. Okay? So it's very ancient, ancient sunlight. Okay. So sunlight itself is quite natural, is it not? So then we go down the principle of understanding. Let's just look at this a second. Sunlight is the source of all carbon connections. It's actually the source of energy. We know in this known universe that energy doesn't deplete or decrease or disintegrate. It does nothing but move in from flow, moving its form, changing its progress. For example, you could drink it and it becomes water, you turn it to energy in your body, and then it becomes something else. Does that make sense? So it's always in flow. It is constantly what we see as degenerating, but it's not, it's just translating or transferring its form into something else. Is that fair? It is, yeah. Yeah, okay, so now let's move forward. We're going to a principle of understanding that it's quite natural. It is truly acceptable to us as human beings. And I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit to get you get a smaller example. It's from the cosmos, 
it's a part of this known universe and it hits us in our heart because it's a part of it. So we sit there with, with cotton, with water, with energy, with photosynthesis, with paper, and it basically is understanding this. We then just translate this a second. We use it as energy and we translate energy into whatever, whether it's fossil fuel or not. Let's just have a conversation. We know that coal is, is mm -hmm. a very important part of our world. Coal is nothing more than, again, the same ancient energy coming through, but it's prehistoric energy, sunlight stored within trees that have fallen and that have decayed over many, many years with compression, millions of years, and become coal. On the other side, we have oil, which is basically known marine matter, living material. So coal is based systematically on photosynthesis, and the other side of marine, it still sits on photosynthesis because the marine animals still eat algae, still eat the other, other elements or fish that eat the algae um, as the chain goes up. And they have died and they've gone to the bottom of the sea. And logically, they've been compressed with the pressure of the water and they've deteriorated or decomposed and translated their energy into oil. So oil is marine matter principally and coal is you could say photosynthesis, plant matter, isn't it? And we use that to translate into energy that keeps us warm and keeps our world safe and the way we understand it. Not going into the greenhouse industry here, we can talk about that in another complete context. So let's get back to money. So if you can imagine your money is the tree, the tree is then mixed with cotton pulp, compounded, turned into a piece of paper, that's in front of your hand. That same piece of paper is printed and on there scribing information that's of necess necessity and value, like we started with, it becomes a note. So it becomes your 50 pound note, 20 pound, 10 pound, five pound, or a hundred, whatever it is. And whichever register of uh, currency you're in, it's there. We say man-made currency, okay. It's not actually currency, it's just paper. Paper equals sunlight. So the question I'm asking you isn't this piece of paper just energy and in specific sunlight and in specific the core to all of man's creation yes or no yes it is on the way that you've explained it yes it is so what could be more natural than to look after oneself so that i'm one less burden on the world on any other human being and using the energetic field that's gifted to us by sunlight to exchange energy and value because the only real value we have in life is energy right when we love somebody that's an energetic transfer so this promissory is nothing more nothing less than a reference point to handing energy to each other so does that understand and get clear we're exchanging energy fascinating absolutely brilliant i love that we ask ourselves, how does this translate into digital? Digital, how does it become an electronic thing? Because these days we pay by card, we pay by plastic online, we pay by online transfer, PayPal, etc. So the principle understanding this is that that is still an electronic energetic transfer from your information, right? It's an electronic machine, Mac, PC, whatever, a phone, and you're transferring it over. Here's the fun part. That energy was created by our two main philosophy of fossil fuels at some stage. And in future, we'll obviously become an energy transfer as well. We're either burning coal or oil, or alternatively, we're becoming hydro. We're becoming, you know, water, for example, or we're becoming wind, which is again energetic fields. It's the same sunlight, the same turbulence, the same weather fields, the same understanding that we're creating physics that turns into nothing. Well, basically, translates the sunlight energy core into something that we can exchange. So this is as the most honest barter that we could ever think of, right? We can physically turn around and easily hand a barter to make it the most humble and honest thing that we could actually trade with. So I hope this is helping individuals to release themselves from the anxiety or the, the limiting belief that money is not natural, it's man-made and it's not, it's uh, the root of all evil. That probably fits in some people's brains. This is not evil, it is your, uh, your unapologetic uh, request for energy transference as you give the love and energy to another person they're going to give you the same love and energy and this is a matter product that you're exchanging with so it's of value to you so once you've got that value i hope this is dismaying that feeling at some stage but if you'd like to go further please jump on 
to the course that we're going to deliver, which is Money Matters or the Energetic Field of Money or Energy of Money. There's two or three courses that will fit in this. Um, just reach out to us and we'll connect. Back to you, Gary. Suki, absolutely amazing. Um, I hope the rest of the audience will have learnt how we can now view money in a different way, a more friendly way, a more flow. So, remember, the power tips, just going to do the power tip round in a moment, but remember, any comments, please comment below, do subscribe, and remember to follow Suki on his official social media channels, that's Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And as I say, also look at sukiwahiwala.com forward slash events for upcoming dates of events and courses that we'll be running. So we asked ourselves the question, charging for coaching, wrong or right? So we looked at point one, being a therapist or a coach, and we likened that to the effect of being a consultant. And do they charge? We then looked at the health and fitness coaches and the polarisation vision in point two. In point three, we went back to CUC and being the conscious, unconscious, consciousness thinking. Then in point four, we then looked at money and we actually asked the question, is it wrong? What is the reluctance and why is it there? In point five, we talked about, do you remember, the gas mask coming down and the oxygen mask coming down in the plane and helping yourself first in order to help others, Guru Nanak. Then in point six, we asked, is it right or wrong to charge and what is money? In point seven, tip seven, we looked at money being man-made. Is that right or wrong? And then we went into the energetic flow in top point eight, the energetic flow of money process, looking at how it's made, paper, cotton, trees, carbon, water, oxygen. And then we looked at big section nine on photosynthesis. And that took me back to my school days. And I'm sure it will you as well. And then finally, we looked at point 10. And this is the crux, that money is basically energy. And whether it's paper or whether it's electronic, it's a flow of energy. And it's the it's the giving of a service and the receiving of reward. So I hope you've enjoyed that. As I say, please do keep in touch, follow us daily, follow Suki, and remember, if you've got your friends, tell them about us, show them the D Daily Tips show, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Bye-bye.